make my dad with your money. Okay. No. Um, let me well, show you a couple of things. Number one, this sounds fun. What is that? Tomorrow? No, it's Thursday, right? The CAB, the CAB is sponsoring free movie night on the lawn, October 24th. Is that Thursday? Today's 22nd. Yes. Um, bring your lawn chair and blankets, free popcorn and drinks. Sounds good. Um, second thing. The calendar, <laughs> which we've had so <laughs> interesting debates about. Um, we did 8-5 the day we were supposed to review, but that all worked out fine because this review was through 8-5. <coughs> we're not actually doing 8-6, we're doing 8-7. 8-6 was something else in the 6th edition that we're not even going to cover. So today's 8.7, <coughs> and it's pretty easy. Let's shoot. Yeah, today's pretty easy. And then 5-6 used to be in the 6th edition, used to be 8.7, and I had it on test 3. I'm going to leave it on test, no, I'm sorry, test, it used to be on test 4. I'm going to leave it on test 4. We are covering it before test 3, but only because y'all could only test on Tuesday. So bless you, bless you. The, um, oh, here you go, the papers that I just gave you, include uh, things to know for test three, all uh, your integration formulas, and so far everything we have in the toolbox. Bless you. I did update these page numbers. They are seventh edition, what you have in your book. But I did not want to redo, retype even answers. I typed all that one night for the sixth edition. <coughs> And then they change one number in each problem, and I'd have to retype it all for the seventh edition. I'm not doing it. So I just copied all the sixth edition review. Mm -hmm. And we'll call that our practice test. And I gave you the even answers and the odd answers for it. Ooh, bless you. I'm having a little allergy. <laughs> all right. So this is all stuff to look at. Maybe this weekend, not tonight. Um, and everybody understands the test goes... Eight one two. You know what? It says eight. Oh, okay. It does say eight one to eight seven on the practice test. What was it? Five six. No, five six is still going to be on the next test. Okay. On test four, we just have to cover it because y'all can only test on Tuesday. All right. So that's what I handed you, and I gave everybody their copy. So I'm through with that. And Miss Cheryl, you said you had a question from somewhere? Yeah, number nine. From the um supplemental. Okay. I, I got through I just it's a correlation or something that's on my at the front. Um so multiply it, so I just okay. I did not bring that back with me. Would you tell me? Can you is it easy yes. to read? Yes. Um the integral of three X over the square root of twenty five minus sine square. And the sign is just on the X. I mean, just on the, yeah, just on the X. Not the. I said 9 X squared, I'm sorry. Oh, that's even better than sign X squared. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's way better. Yay. No, 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 no. I, that's just what I heard. Um, 9 X squared. Yay, I'm so glad. I just, I don't know if you I know okay. I can get the numerator to be more than the Mm -hmm. The derivative of the denominator, the der if u is 25 minus 9x squared, then du is negative 18x, mm -hmm. which would be pretty easy to get. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put my dx there. Um, u is negative 18x dx. And so if I put a negative 1, 6 here, I could think of that as being 25 minus 9x squared to the negative 1 half with du right beside it. 
And before I do anything, is that equivalent to the line above it? Let's see, negative 1 6 times negative 18x is positive 3x, ugly to the 1 half. So that's ugly to the negative 1 half with derivative of the ugly beside it. So what's next? Okay. Add 1 to the exponent, it would be positive 1 half. Um, divide by the exponent, same as multiplying by 2. Did you just find it? What goofy thing did you do? So you missed 2 times <laughs> negative 1 6. I thought it was 1 half. <laughs> well, Thank that's, you. that's Thank so you. good. You're, um, These um, are the mistakes I make now. I know. In, in college algebra, I can't add x plus x. I'm kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding x squared. Okay. okay that was easy to fix. Yep, thank you. Anything else you need to see before we talk about 8.7? Again, we're skipping 8.6. We're never going back to it. Um, it used to be in Chapter 5, and I talked to the other calculus teachers, and they said, eh, it's not that important going on. So, anything else from the board? All right. Well, let me tell you what 8.7 is about. And you'll love it, and you'll want a thousand of them on the test. Because it is about using these tables that are in Appendix B. There are some things that are just... We don't have any tools in our toolbox for integrating some stuff. So there are tables for integration that are just formulas. And I, Miss, 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 Samantha, I'm going to give them to you on the test. It's just going to be plugging numbers into formulas. No. Um, there are, in Appendix B, in the back of your book, there's two two, three, four pages of formulas. And so all we have to get good at today is looking at a problem in the 8.7 homework and figuring out what formula to use. But they're broken down into broad categories. Uh, U to a power, uh, that's just the general power rule. Yeah, we know those two. Uh, forms involving a constant plus a constant times a function. There's formulas involving square roots. So you can look at the headings pretty quickly and figure out what to use on most of them. 46 through 58 are forms involving sine or cosine. 59 to 68 are formulas involving tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant, etc. until there's a total of 100 formulas. And I won't copy all 100 for you on the test, but um, I may... There may be two problems on the test using these tables, and I'll give you maybe six formulas at the top. You just figure out which of the six to use. It won't be a hundred to use because I don't want to waste any time. I will try to answer that tomorrow. Um, I have I don't have y'all's test made. I have last semester's test made, and I I know I try to never give less than 17 problems, or 14 problems on the test. 14 or 7 points each. Anything lower than that is a letter day grade I problem. Can you and just tell me if you think it's appropriate. <laughs> I, might, I might ask you to do that. And then again, I might not. <laughs> All right. So, let's just have an easy, relaxing day using formulas. And just in case Cheryl's the only one who notices, um, that's the homework. You want to go ahead and write it down? <laughs> this wasn't high film any notes, so I'm not going back there.
570. Page 570. All right. So, you might not even want to open your book to uh, page 570. I will copy the problems down for you. What you want to be looking at in your book is Appendix um, B, which is on page A3, I think, in the back of your book. And we want to find something that looks like this. functions. Um, usually A and B are used for constants and U's are used for functions. So look up just a second. To me, this looks like a U squared times an A plus BX squared. X's are U's, A's and B's are constants. So that's what I'm looking for in my tables. A U squared times A a plus bx squared in the denominator. It is 13. Very good. So that's how difficult to not what this is going to be. Now, what helps me, and the problem's a tiny bit harder, but what helps me is writing down, since the formula is all in terms of A's and B's and U's, I'm going to write down what my A and my B and my U are. And one other thing to watch out for, if U is not just plain old X, then I have to find DU, and I have to make sure that I have that DU in my integral before I integrate. So in this problem, U would be what? Just plain old X. And A would be, let's see, from the 13, A is in the place of the, I mean, 4 is in place of the A, and B is 3. Yes, that's also something to notice. The formula has a 1 in the numerator, and to make that have a 1 in the numerator, we could just bring a 2 excuse me, out in front of the integral, and then it would be exactly number 13. So I'm not even going to rewrite it. I'm just going to say 2 times um, negative 1 over a squared would be what? Negative 1 16. Little big bracket. What's a plus 2 b u? plus 6x <clears throat> over u times a plus b u is 4 plus 3x. Jeez, I don't know if I do this by eight. Plus 2b over a is 6 over 4, which is 3 halves times the natural log of the absolute value of u over a plus b u would be 4 plus 3x. Did something get cut off? Oh, my plus c got cut off. Oh my god, that's just plus c in the end. Most of these won't even clean up very much. Um, that's coffee. Coffee, 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 coffee.
What do you think we could do to clean that up? It's tricky. Factored form is usually considered more simpler. More simpler. Don't say like I didn't say that. More. <laughs> yes, definitely call that coefficient negative one over thirty-two. If this first term inside the brackets had um, a coefficient, then I might try to factor that fractional coefficient out. But if that's not the case, I think I'm just going to leave negative thirty-two. Or negative, I'm sorry, negative one eighth, yeah, in front of the whole thing. Um, it looks like last night I did distribute the negative one eighth, but it doesn't matter. There's nothing else I can do. Let me see. Oh, okay. I see what I did last night. And there's a variety of things I would count. Um, you know, why did I call it 2 times 1 16th and 32nd? Um, I think last night I factored a 2 out of that numerator because I realized if I did, I could um, distribute that negative 1 8 and the 2 would divide into the 8. But this is not anything that's going to be counted wrong if you don't do it. And then when I distributed the negative one eighth, I got negative. 3x plus 2 over 4x times 3x plus 4. Then don't forget the negative 1 8 times the 3 halves is negative 3 sixteenths. So that's what I had as my answer, but either one of these is perfectly fine. I just try to get the answer in the back of the book to make sure I'm right. Okay? Yay, a thousand of these. Woohoo! Let's do it. All right, number six. I'm looking for a formula that has a square root of. I'm guessing this will be an a squared minus a u squared, maybe. Or maybe there's a formula with an a squared minus u to the fourth in the numerator and just an x in the denominator. Well, let's see. If, if that is and a squared minus u squared, then what would a be? a would be what? Yes, yes. Okay, so what's my a? I know somebody say a. A, a. a, thank you. Were you saying it, Samantha, and I didn't hear you? No, okay. Okay, and what if if formula 39 has an a squared minus a u squared, then what's our u? Mm -hmm. It has to be the thing that's squared. It's an x squared that's squared to get an x to the fourth. Oh, I thought that was x squared. Oh, okay. And if that is our du, or if that's our u, okay. Okay. So we'll figure that out. Well, 
Jordan thinks it is formula 39. Let me look at formula 39 and see how far away we are. Um, oh, yes. If u is x squared, then to use formula 39, we would have to have a u, which is an x squared in the denominator. Is there a way to get that? If I have u equals x squared, then what do I also have to take into consideration? D, du and dx aren't going to be the same thing unless u is just x. If u is x squared, then du is what? 2x dx. Is there a way that I can get um, a 2x in the numerator and an x in the denominator? I would need that denominator to be x squared and I would need the numerator to have a 2x in it. And then see what to do. Mm -hmm. Can you just put x in the top, or a 2x, and then make the denominator to x squared? So really you're multiplying by, um, by, hmm. Yeah, you're really multiplying by 2x over x, which is not 1, but if you put a 1 half out front, and then see if that's equivalent to the line above it. Is it? Mm -hmm. And now it's in the form um, 1 half times the integral of um, square root of a squared minus u squared over u, u, and it's from 39. Which is right here. Where root a squared minus u squared would be what? Square root of 64 minus u, um, x to the fourth. Minus a, which is 8, times the natural log of the absolute value of 8 plus square root of 64 minus x to the fourth over what? x squared, because u is x squared, plus a constant. distribute the one half and call that one half square root of 64 minus x squared minus 4 natural log of all that other stuff. So sometimes it doesn't match a formula exactly and you have to figure out um, how to make it match the formula. And then don't forget if u is anything other than plain old x, then du is not going to be plain old dx. You're going to have to make sure you have the du there. Ms. Michaela, is that okay? 
Um, where? Sixty. Oh, oh, oh! I had six. I had x to the fourth there, and then focus, focus. It changed to a two. problem took me four lines instead of, yeah, no, instead of a half page like yesterday, um, the worst took four lines. Yesterday, the best took two lines. <laughs> All right, so let's do number eight. thinking square root of x may have to erase, but I think you will be square root of x, in which case I'm looking for a formula that says sine to some power of u over u.
What formula are you using now? Because we could use um, 50 again because 50 is signed to any power, but 48 may be simpler because 48 specifically signs squared. Mm -hmm. All right, so negative 3 halves times, I'm going to label this formula 48. Before you simplify, First, I multiplied negative 2 times 3 fourths is negative 3 halves. And then that formula, that 1 half is in the formula. So, yeah. So, negative. I guess I'll go ahead and clear out the brackets and call that negative 3 4 square root of x plus 3 halves sine root of sine. Since I have three coefficients that are fractions, rather than distributing that negative three halves, I probably should have factored a one half out. I'm not going to rewrite it, but I'm just saying I probably should have factored out a one half, or mm, I should have factored out a yes one half, so that all of my coefficients inside parentheses would still be whole numbers. Not bad. Sometimes I have to use two formulas. So far, so good. So, by two, you can make that one. It was negative 2 times this and negative 2 times that. Negative 2 times 3 fourths is negative 3 halves, and then that's just the formula. Mm -hmm. If this wasn't in a section um, titled immigration, immigration, really? <laughs> immigration. <laughs> immigration tables. 
integration tables. Um, what does that seem well suited for? Yeah, integration by parts or uh, the tabular method that sometimes Cheryl uses. Um, on the test, the ones that I give you to use formulas for, no, let me reword that. Anything that I don't want to use, I don't want you to use a formula for, I'll make sure you can do it some other way. That's still not the way I wanted to say it. Um, yeah, like on the test, I wouldn't give you um, the formula for that because there's another way you can do it. You can do it by parts. Um, have fun with that. Look for a formula that has e to the, that's probably an ax, and then a sine of a, maybe a bx. Okay. e to the u, number 85, let me find it. There it is. Okay. Now it's helpful to me to label my A, my U, and my B. So what's my A? A is the coefficient of X and the exponent of E. That's fun to say. A is negative four. Um, U is what? is x, so yay, we don't have to worry, du is just dx, and b is what? 3. Is that the only three things I need for that formula? Um, do I have to do any rewriting to make it fit that formula? No? I think it already fits that formula. So formula 85. to the AU over A squared plus B squared times A sine BU minus B cosine BU plus C. Three so far. I'm so thankful. I mean, that's even better than the tabular method if you just give me a formula. Um, let's see. That would be that denominator is 25, and there's nothing. I'm not factoring negative out of those parentheses and just write the coefficient as negative 1 25th. And then I could either have e to the four, negative 4x beside that coefficient, or I could put the e to the 4x in the denominator. Since it wasn't written in the denominator here, I'd probably just leave it e to the negative 4x. And then I factor the negative out from inside the parentheses. and then we'll skip over to 28 and call it a day. Ah, yeah. 
That fits that very well because it's just natural log to a power du. Now, if my u is what? Just x. So I love it when u is x and du is just dx. And what's my n? 3. So formula number 1. Formula 91. Actually, you could use the same formula again, or 90 is specifically for natural log of u squared. If you use the same formula again, you're going to have another integral. But if you use formula 90, then you don't have to use another formula. Integral. There's no big reason to do that. Tell me what you're thinking. Oh, I could. I honestly don't know what they will have done in the back of the book. But you could factor an X out of both of those terms. And that would be the natural log of X. One, wonder why we don't write natural log cube of X like we write sine cube of X. I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah, that's the square term. Um, and then I'm going to distribute negative 3 probably. Negative 6 plus 6 natural log of X minus 3 natural log of X squared plus a constant. Um, I think I might know why there's no absolute value. Um, it's, I think, because whatever you let x be, when you take the natural log and square it, you're going to get a positive. Um, that's... Right. So, why is there no absolute value? I would just have to ponder that some more. Our, our absolute value... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Samantha, we got the absolute value not when we were integrating natural log of x, but when we were integrating 1 over x. We got natural log of absolute value of x. All right, last one. Um, no, actually it's uh, short and, and fun. It's a two-liner. And one of the two lines is the original problem.
Do you think maybe we could do that without a formula? Let's try. Let's try. If you were going to do that without a formula, what would you think you might do? Okay, which one do you want to try? Let U be the natural log of T, and then DU would be what? One, hey, we have that. One over T, DT, and so I'm not going to, um, not necessarily going to actually use formal substitution. I'm just going to write that as 1 over 1 plus natural log of t squared times 1 over t dt. How does that look like? Yes. Oh, Samantha. I thought Samantha was having an exciting moment when she was just showing Yes! That's 1 over a plus u squared. So what's the formula for integrating 1 over 1 plus u squared? 1 over a, which is just here, a is 1. So 1 part tangent, um, what? u over a, and that would just be natural log of t. Um, that's a constant. Who needs a formula for that? I can do it. Now, it was, just for the record, it was formula 23 that we could have used. Actually, we did use it. We just have that one memorized. We didn't have to oh. refer to the table for it. Yay! Oh, today's so much better. Oh, you're right. Last night, I, I mean, yesterday afternoon, I had to just get my husband to give me a back massage. Oh. <laughs> Wait, can he do this math He, to be a biologist, he went through calculus one. And he couldn't do I me mean, now. Honestly, every once in a while, he forgets how to add fractions because he hasn't done it. Don't so we all? Yes, <laughs> yes. But um, he had to go through Cal 1 to be a biologist. He's never seen this and never wants to see it. Oh, what? <laughs> he's missing out. No, he has, um, he he has, has a different, biology. yeah, he has an exciting career. All right, y'all got the homework? Ooh, today's better than yesterday.